Hi guys! I would have really really loved to deliver this talk live but unfortunately the doctor has advised me against flying. Um, as of this week, I am 32 weeks pregnant and unfortunately my flying has to stop until the baby arrives. I would just like to give a huge shout out to Elena and the entire TEDx in the Subang team for being so understanding with my current um, condition at the moment. My name is January Lau. I am 31 years old. I am a wife and a mother to two and three quarter children and I am an Indian classical dancer. Look at me right now. Would you have guessed that I had a performance two weeks ago? Take a look at this. <laughs> I have been dancing for the past 23 years, ever since I was a small girl, which means that I've danced through school, puberty, A-levels, university, marriage, after having kids and basically everything a woman is supposed to go through and let me tell you, it has been far from easy. But here I am, well, sitting here and talking about it, which kind of means I have survived so far. Femininity is an amazing thing. We don't know the strength that we carry inside ourselves until it is put to the test. We do what needs to be done and come out of the other side of the tunnel thinking, wow, I am such a badass. And really, that is what all women are, badasses. It took me a while to embrace my identity as a woman because of a few factors. Firstly, my dance mentor is a man. The gurus that we work with from India were mostly men. The musicians were also mostly men and if even our tailors were men, which meant that my upbringing was very patriarchal. And I think um, it's easy to say in an Asian society, most of us are brought up in a very patriarchal society. I was always told that one's dance career usually ends the moment you become a wife, even worse, a mother. I was constantly surrounded by mothers who sent their children to dance classes because they themselves wanted to be dancers. And to be honest, it was not a very positive image of motherhood. The term housewife was used like it was a bad word, but that was what drove me in the opposite direction. I used all of that negativity, turned it around and told myself that that was not the path I wanted to follow. There was a time in my life when I wasn't dancing. You see, I was with my dance company for 19 years and once I left, I was quite lost. When you are associated with an institution for most of your life, you lose a big chunk of your identity when you find yourself all alone. I got married two years after I left and had kids two years after that. I did a little bit of dancing here and there, but because I was searching for my identity as a person, I was still hazy and unsure of the direction I was heading. As aimless as I was with my life, one thing was certain and that was I have always wanted a baby. I never thought much about marriage, but I've always wanted to be a mother. I also knew that I wanted to raise my children without domestic help. So when the doctor told me I was having twins, I freaked the hell out. My husband and I didn't speak the entire car ride home because we were that shocked. How was I going to manage two babies all by myself? 
but I'm a really stubborn girl. And I told myself that in countries where help is not really an option, mothers manage just fine. So why couldn't I? So managed, I did. I mean, I'm still managing, two kids, no help, and we seem to be doing fine. I learned how to feed two babies at once, thanks to my strong dancer thighs. There was enough room for the babies to lay their heads simultaneously. After the kids turned one, my husband said that I should start dancing again. I did not know this then, but this was really when my life turned around. I turned my husband's TV room, man cave, into my own personal dance studio because I had to bring the dance to me. I focused on two things. Number one, no more excuses. And two, say yes to everything. Now, I truly believe that when the timing is right, things naturally fall into place without much effort. The moment my basement was ready, I was asked by my first dance teacher and now my dance partner, Radhi Mala Govinda Raju, to work together on a piece for Aswara's Dance Festival. This was 2014. We created a work called Rehab because that is what dance is to us. Therapy for the soul. We scheduled rehearsals during my twins' nap times. They were one. And if they were awake, we'd place them in a playpen. Like I said, no excuses. It's every choreographer's aim to perform a created work more than once because of all the effort we put into it. So we performed rehab not once but four times and even extended the piece from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. It was exhilarating to be progressing, performing, giving workshops and dancing independently. Last year, we were invited again, this time for another festival to create another work which we called Return. At the end of the year, we performed Rehab and Return together. I had performed over 10 times, which from nothing was a huge feat, and all the while jugg juggling married life and raising twins on my own. Having a support system is crucial. You need like-minded, positive people who don't put you or your ideas down. You need to surround yourself with people who say, why not? I surrounded myself with very strong mothers, friends that I had before marriage and friends that had children around the same time as I did. I learned from the best and they helped create the mother I am today. Some say that getting married at 26 is very young. I agree, but what's wrong with young? I had lived independently from a young age and have always felt like an old soul. But because I married someone who was really supportive and understanding, I could grow and evolve together with him. That is what marriage is about. Not finding your other half, but bringing yourself as a whole to create something new. Just before my twins were born, a website dedicated to urban mothers was about to launch, makshik.com, and they asked me if I'd like to come on board as a contributor. Knowing full well how hectic life was going to be, I agreed because I wanted to document my journey of motherhood. I looked high and low for parenting books on twins when I was pregnant, but I didn't find anything that sounded real. Everything I read sounded too good to be true and I did not believe a word of it. So I wrote how I didn't get my dream birth, how the twins were driving me insane, how I struggled with my postpartum body, how I was coping with my new identity as mother and wife without forgetting myself. You see, all these things that I was doing are considered new things that mums do nowadays. You didn't hear about blogger mums during my mother's time. As small as our world has become on the internet, it has also become lonelier because it used to take an entire community to raise a child. Without realizing when we post photos of our child's incredible frozen themed first birthday party, there is a mother who is looking at these photos feeling inadequate, not good enough because she hasn't had time to prepare party packs for her child's classmates. We have this habit of sharing the perfect version of ourselves on social media because we think that this is the norm. We don't see the chaos that goes behind the camera and in turn, we find it hard to cope with the chaos that is motherhood. 
Now, this is where feminism comes in. Feminism is not about making women strong because we already are. It's about changing the way we perceive that strength. You see, women have been raising and nurturing society for years. Think of a word that describes your mothers and grandmothers, and I'm certain that strength is one of those words. When you look at me, you probably think that I'm a cool, hip, modern mom, and I'm sure that I am, but I'm really, really old school when it comes to raising my children. I cook for them, I bake them their birthday cakes, and even whack them when they get out of line. I am strict and I make sure that they respect their elders, they always have to say please and thank you, and they have to clean up their mess before they go to bed every night. Why? Because these small things, these values, will carry them far in life. These values seem to be forgotten nowadays, and it has become quite common to pass on the responsibility of raising children to a complete stranger because it makes our lives somewhat easier. Please don't get me wrong, I understand that in this economy we need dual income households but that means we need to make even more effort in instilling these core values in our children. And how do we do this? We lead by example. I can't expect my children to clean up after themselves if I don't pick up my own things off the floor. I say please and thank you. I follow my passion. By performing pregnant, they learn that nothing is impossible. They have been watching me rehearse even before they could walk and hopefully they will learn that if you want something badly enough, you try your level best to make that happen. You focus on solutions rather than on problems at hand. A month before I found out I was pregnant, I was still struggling with my femininity. I felt like I was on the losing end because I am a woman. I felt so helpless because once you become a mother, you are forever a mother. Mundane things like buying groceries, feeding the children, bathing them, sending them to school, picking them up was a daily affair and my time revolved around them. I didn't have the freedom to say, sure, I'll have one more coffee or no, I don't feel like getting out of bed today. That was never an option. I used to be so angry and frustrated because I felt my husband had a choice to be a parent. He had a choice to bathe them, a choice to feed them because I was the constant factor. I was always there to ensure that these things were done. There's this female stand-up comedian, I'm sure you've all heard, heard about her, who recently performed while seven months pregnant, Ali Wong. I'd like to share a quote from her in a recent interview about how she embraces her femininity. You just shift your perspective and think, wait a minute, I'm a woman, and most stand-up comics are male. You know what male comics can't do? They can't get pregnant. They can't perform pregnant. So my attitude is just use all those differences. Don't think of it as you're oppressed. And this totally applies to all fields, don't you think? We can all do things that males can't and will never understand. So we should embrace all of our amazing. And to be honest, preparing and agreeing to perform pregnant and deciding not to put my life on hold because of my pregnancy has completely empowered me. This is something men will never have the privilege of doing and for that I feel incredible. I am able to embrace my femininity at its highest form and revel in that strength. As a bonus, I have been receiving the kindest words of gratitude from female friends and complete strangers telling me that they themselves feel empowered. Like I said in my introduction, I am only 31 years old. I am still evolving and I am still discovering who I am, but I finally feel like I am on the right track. It has taken me a long time to get here and I still have a long way to go. And life is truly about the journey, not the destination. Thank you guys. If you have any questions or if you'd like to reach out to me, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is January Low, J-A-N-U-A-R-Y-L-O-W. You can also find me on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, or you can email me. You can email me at januarylow at gmail.com. My website is www.januarylow.com 
and I have a blog, uh, Januarism, J-A-N-U-A-R-I-S-M dot blogspot dot com. Uh, I hope to hear from you guys if you have any questions or if you'd just like to say hi. Thank you so much for listening to me and thank you so much once again to the TEDx Inti Subang team for allowing me to be a part of this afternoon. Thank you so much.